Hi, Achim here, Inner Space Explorers. Recently there was a video at Dive Talk where Gus, Juan and myself were discussing general dive topics and it was about dive planning etc. And at some point I said something like uh, you need to know your RMV because uh, then you can figure out uh, how long or how much backup gas you need for that specific cave dive or whatever and that this is not rocket science. And then there was kind of a small shitstorm going on and people complaining this is rude and I'm not uh, realizing I may talk to um, new divers and uh, this is not appropriate, blah blah blah. So, beside the fact that I'm rude and uh, don't care about people and all of this, what uh, we hear frequently, uh, I think it's an interesting um, topic because, um, and I actually wrote that in a comment in the video, that I'm well aware that I'm talking to new divers and um, it is something that you need to know to make a proper educated decision when it comes to your backup gas, when it comes to your gas planning and that does not only um, appeal to cave diving but also to your normal recreational stuff. I mean if you do let's say a 30 meter wreck dive, um, or a 30 meter dive on a reef or whatever, um, you still need to make a proper gas plan and the gas plan is not let's be back on the boat with 500 psi or 50 bars or whatever the plan is that the dive master recommends because that's not dive planning that's planning for a dive for something that you can adjust and that you can plan and then have some sort of a uh, somehow it will work out plan for the emergency that you cannot plan for so the, and I explained that in that, uh, in that dive talk video as well I mean, we plan for the worst case scenario and then we see when we do this plan how much gas do we have left and then we figure out is this appropriate for what we want to do or do we need to adjust either the dive plan or the tank size um, and so on. So the reason, uh, or the, the reason I'm, or the purpose of this video is not to teach you, um, to teach you gas planning, there's other stuff on the, on the channel, it's about things you need to know, numbers you need to know and um, going back to this rocket science thing, I mean understanding that you plan with 20 liters per minute RMV and that you probably use something like 14 or 15 or even a little bit less it's not rocket science I mean going to 30 meters knowing that there's 4 bars of pressure and that you plan with 20 liters per minute is not rocket science my 11 year old sons can understand that and do this calculation. So if somebody is offended by me saying this is not rocket science then you probably should go to school and not into a dive class because then obviously you have an issue. And uh, if you consider this route, fine, go watch something else. But this entire concept of telling people that this is all fun and uh, this particular dive agency telling this, their instructors that you must not tell a student that they're the words danger or accident or injury is just simply wrong. It's a potentially life-threatening um, activity. You can get hurt, you can get hil uh, killed, you can get serious decompression illness, you can have your lungs overexpand. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong and ultimately, uh, ultimately you can drown, which means it kills you. And if you're not willing to accept that and understand that, then you should not be in the sport. And any instructor that tells you something different should not teach. Right? I'm not saying it's a dangerous sport. It's not at all. It's actually a super safe sport. But being underwater as a human being, not having gills, means that you can drown. And you have to understand these risks and you have to prepare for them. So you can actually handle these risks. And giving diving education, like, oh, this is all fun, just swim along and... Uh, all will be good is not the way to prepare people for these potential risks. So with that being said, there is numbers that should not be somewhere in a book in your bookshelf but they should be in your head because it makes you able to understand certain plannings and also make a decision in the meaning of somebody gives you a plan, somebody gives you numbers and this red flag comes up like this is, cannot be true, right? So I'll give you an example, somebody makes a dive plan with you 
and you're diving air and you're diving to let's say 30 meters and that person says something of 30 minutes of no decompression limit there should be a beep going on in your head like no that's the decompression limit for nitrox 32 at 30 meters and not for air so this person mixed something up right but if you're not aware if this knowledge is not like here then you will follow this and you will run into issues unless some computer or whatever tells you you're wrong and the same goes for the computer I mean if that computer fails I don't want to say fucks up but fails for some reason and we've all seen that then you need to be able to look at these numbers and say like hey that, that cannot be true it's not possible that I have an hour of decompression after 40 minutes at 20 meters or something like that right it's like if you go to the supermarket and you buy 10 things and in the back of your head you're like okay this is 5 and 10 and this is 12 and blah 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 so you have a rough estimate when you go to the cashier right and if then this person comes up with a super unreasonable number you will be like oh that, that's not possible let's check it and that's the same thing that needs to be in your head when it comes to diving and it comes to these certain numbers and I'm talking no decompression limit I'm talking CNS limits forget about the OTUs in that perspective I mean it's not that much more you need to know it and obviously your RMV and some basic calculations um, pressure related time etc you need to know these numbers and if you do proper education and I'm not talking about you need to do ISE because this is the only agency that's te teaching that that's not true as basically all the materials out there it doesn't matter if it's PETI or SSI or CMS or whatever has this information in their manuals it's just the instructors not providing it because they're doing shortcuts more students in a shorter time for less money just <laughs> get them through the, the system and now you can read that on your own and that's the, the big issue these things need to be addressed in your initial training every person that goes through a recreational beginners class with me, with Inner Space Explorers and hopefully with any other class should be aware of an RMV for example of how do I calculate how much gas do I need at a certain depth how much gas do I need to make it back to the surface in case something goes wrong I may have a little bit of an elevated RMV, I have to take care of a partner who's probably also stressed out and also have a little bit of an issue with a higher RMV. And this is simple calculation and it is not rocket science. Don't get offended by that. I mean, everybody can figure that out and if not, there's an instructor that took your money so this person should be able to explain it to you and if you don't get it the first time, you should get it the second time. You need to know these things. Happy Christmas to everybody. Hope you're not offended, hope you agree, if not, put it in the comment section, I'm happy to read it and respond. Other than that, Merry Christmas, have a good time, see you in the next video, probably next year. Take care, bye bye.